Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So this morning, I want to talk about this one important metric. Yes, this one that shows the strength of Bitcoin getting higher and stronger and why Bitcoin's price always follows this metric. So let's talk about this. And also, let's talk about some crypto news. There's some important things going on today, specifically that you don't want to miss. So let's do it. Welcome, 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 guys. Hopefully you're back from your long weekend. Maybe uh, the U.S. market is open today and it's opening in the red, which is not good. It's never, never good, although... You know what? Bitcoin seems to be doing its thing these days. Okay, but we'll see. Today's the third day of spot ETF trading. Are we going to see some greens? Are we going to see some more reds? We don't know. First two days, volume exploded. Today is officially the third day after this long weekend. So let's see where it goes. But you know what? Just because Gary approved spot ETFs does not mean that he has become an ally to crypto overall. And he says it as much in his press release or statement, official statement, I should say, that he's still very bearish on the entire sector and basically everything is still security. That's why Brad Garlinghouse took a shot at Gary saying that, mm -hmm. yeah, he's a, he's a political liability, that he's not actually looking out for the people or investors, none at all. He has some hidden agenda. And he probably does, he probably does. Again, if you've read that statement that SEC published from Gary about spot ETFs, you'll know that he is very bearish. And he basically said, I had to do it because we lost the lawsuit at Grayscale, which of course he still does not agree with, uh, but he had to do it nonetheless. And that's the only reason why, right? Um, will he get replaced? Yes. I think he's going to get replaced later this year, but until then we got to deal with Gary and all the shenanigans that, that he pulls, but outside of Gary Gensler, because no one really cares, uh, about him anymore. Uh, we do have several big companies like ripple. I just mentioned is going IPO circle is also going IPO, but circle CEO says there's a very good chance of stable coin loss this year. Now, Normally speaking, when you hear about this, it's not a good thing. Why would you want stable coins to be regulated, right? Like they're just packed to the dollar. What's the big deal? Well, today, actually, there is something going on that's quite significant and it relates to one bad actor I've been telling you guys and warning you guys about for years now. So today it looks like another stable coin, true USD, is depegging. That's not good because there's a lot of people that for whatever reason started selling and now there's some questions whether or not true usd has the reserve so as of right now it has depegged to 0.9884 which doesn't sound all too bad but the reality is when a stable coin depegs more than 0.001 off from the dollar there is something going on with it and true usd has been gaining a lot of strength recently it's close to $2 billion, but will this be another stable coin collapse? Hopefully not. Now, here's the thing. Here's the controversial thing about True USD. You know who's involved with True USD? Uh, Justin Sun. This is why I've always said stay far, far, far away from anything that this guy touches. So supposedly earlier last year, uh, someone secretly bought true USD. Like it was never revealed who, but people put two and two together and basically said Justin Sun bought it. Okay, so Justin Sun owns true USD. Um, you know, this this would not surprise me because whenever he again, any project he buys, he 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 bought BitTorrent and that has collapsed, and he has bought Polionex. And that exchange has collapsed. Uh, he bought Hoibi. So watch Hoibi collapse. It's, it's pretty much going to do. Uh, True USD, if he bought, it's going to collapse. And that's why it's funny because someone yesterday just said, oh, look at this meme coin bite because Justin Sun owns a lot of it. I'm like, 
well, that's almost guaranteed that that meme coin is going to fail. So <laughs> just be careful, okay? Hopefully none of you guys are holding true USD. It's not very popular in the States. I think it's more popular on Binance and overseas. So just be careful. Hopefully this does not collapse into something big, but it is having problems right now and just avoid anything Justin Sun touches. All right, now moving on from these news, what's going on with Bitcoin specifically itself? Okay, well, we know that it's still taking a breather. It hasn't moved. It's still around 42, whatever. Okay, the RSI does hit a four month low. The daily RSI hit a four month low, even though the price is up 70%. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. So it does seem like we are resetting. We're getting that consolidation phase once again, waiting for the overbought, you know, uh, overbought situation. Recently with spot ETF approval, we pumped up to 49,000, waiting for that to reset and then Bitcoin will be ready to rock. And here's another look at this, how the highs, and the lows have been getting higher and the daily RSI has actually been staying put going sideways and actually going down a little bit. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. And of course, overall, it's looking good too because just look at what's happened before right when we have gotten close to the having event. Let's not forget the having event is right around the corner, right? So after the having event is when you get the most bullish times and that's three months away. That's three months away. That's why a lot of people, you know, those of us that's in the know, that's been in, been in the space, we know that the having event's a big deal. But people outside, people that are not in the know, they have no idea what a having event is, right? So that, that's one clear example where being in this space gives you a huge advantage over someone not in this space. Because we know that the four-year cycle is basically built on this, four, this, this having event that occurs every four years, right? And it's right there. It's right there. And then you compound that, right? The FOMO-ness, <laughs> it's not even a word, but I'm going to make it up. The FOMO-ness after a having event increases dramatically and then you compound that with the availability of ETFs now and institutions also FOMO in with the retail investors. I mean, it's just going to be, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be phenomenal. I mean, that, that's, that's how I feel. Here's a better look of what happens every single cycle. Um, literally, this is what happens every single cycle. This is not even exaggerated. This is what happens every single cycle. And that big climb upwards happens after every having cycle, right? Every single time. So now we're in the fourth cycle. Are we, if you were a betting person, would you say that we deviate this time around or would we do something similar to previous times? If I was a betting man, I would say the latter, right? Um, again, having event coming up. And then we have that parabolic run. That has always been the case, and I don't expect anything different this time around. And here's the thing. Because this is based on years, what you're seeing is years. All the little dips, you don't see. You just see green, right? But trust me, there's a lot of dips. There's a lot of red in between. I've shown you guys charts. 20 30% dips, they happen during these parabolic runs. Does that mean the run is over? No, right? So that's why... Having patience is a virtue, especially when it comes to investing. And just know that DCA and accumulation over the long haul is the winning strategy when it comes to Bitcoin because you're just letting the gains come to you. Because of this, even if you held for four years and you held all the way to the bottom, right? You are rewarded after the next having event, which is coming up in just a few months important but here's something else that's important and i tried to make this this is basically what i was hinting at in the in the title 
besides having event, besides ETFs, besides rate cuts, besides whatever, all these like bullish things that happens in every four years, this is the one metric that really matters. It's the probably the most boring metric there is for Bitcoin, but the most important <laughs> metric because this measures the the network security. Okay. And I'm talking about the hash rate. Again, those of you guys in the space, you know this. And you're like, ah, this is boring. I don't want to know about hash rate. Um, but you guys realize that this is the most important metric there is because this measures basically the compute power in cumulative around the world from all the miners that are trying to find the next Bitcoin. They're mining Bitcoin, right? And they do so with these machines and the output of those machines are measured in hash or the hash rate, right? So basically, as this number goes higher, that means there's more machines trying to mine Bitcoin, which means that it becomes virtually more impossible to ever hack. This is why Bitcoin's network is the most decentralized in the world and the safest network in the world because it has never been hacked before. And it's virtually impossible because there's no way to hack this. There is just no way to hack it. You can't make changes. You can't make new add-ons or, or try to inject something without majority of the miners agreeing to it. And it's just impossible. And even if you wanted to hack it, you would have to do a 51% attack, which means you have to replicate the network and you take over 51% of the hash rate, which again becomes more and more impossible as the hash rate goes up. And here's the most important thing about all of this. Not only is the network becoming more impossible to hack, the price follows the hash rate. It always has and always will. So if the hash rate continues to go upwards, there is basically nothing to worry about. If you see a dramatic drop, like in 2021, you saw that dramatic drop with hash rate. The only reason why that happened is because China decided to kick out all the miners. That's why we saw that drop. But other than that, you basically the hash rate just keeps going up. Like the price. Like basically like this. The price just keeps going up. Even with all the downs, but the hash rate keeps on going up. That's important. This is the most important metric there is for Bitcoin, in my opinion. The hash rate. The price trails the hash rate. It always has and always will. But as long as the hash rate is going up, you know the price is going up. Because the miners are mining, they're securing the network, and because of the halving event, the inflation rate is getting cut in half, and eventually there's just going to be no more Bitcoin. But these guys are not giving up. They keep on increasing their hash rate, which means they keep on increasing the security of Bitcoin and making it more scarce, right? So this is the most important metric there is. It may be the most boring metric, but it is the most important in my opinion. And it's still looking pretty darn good. It's looking pretty darn good. And lastly, in case you wanted more ver verification that we're going to the parabolic bull stage, here's another one. The Marcus cycle model from plan B pretty colored dots <laughs> and we are in still according to this accumulation stage because we have not hit that parabolic bull stage yet we're getting close but not quite there yet okay all we have to wait for is a red dot that's when we know i'm just kidding we don't need to wait for red dots to know <laughs> the having event is around the corner. The hash rate is all time high. And there's other metrics that show that Bitcoin is only getting stronger. So again, we're just moving according to plan. Nothing has deviated. And when you zoom out like this, you don't see all the dips. You don't see all the accumulation periods. You don't see the consolidation periods. You just see parabolic climbs over and over and over again, right? But there are a lot of dips throughout every single cycle. So don't be fearing yourself out. You are your worst own enemy, right? That is the case. 
There's a lot of people that throw fud out there. But you, if you believe in that, well, then you are, you are the chump, right? You don't want to be the chump. You don't want to pass your gains or your life changing wealth to anyone else. You want to keep it for yourself, right? So educate yourself. Look at what Bitcoin is doing right now and understand Bitcoin in its entirety. Then you will be a long term holder forever. Or if you truly understand what Bitcoin's about and you know how to measure its strengths, like how I've been telling you guys, then you will be a Bitcoin holder forever. And more and more people are Bitcoin holders forever. That's why the supply keeps decreasing and long term holder percentage keeps on increasing. Important stuff, guys. Important stuff. I may, may have ranted a little bit too much. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, just some Solana news. I noticed that a lot of people started buying Solana's phone, the Saga phone, because of the airdrops. You get all these exclusive airdrops. And the biggest thing that made it appealing was the Bonk airdrops because Bonk started going upwards a ton. And then people realized that the Bonk airdrops itself covered the price of the phone. And now people are realizing the other airdrops are worth a lot too. So now you can't buy this phone. It's sold out and being sold on eBay for like thousands and thousands of dollars. So when this came out, I was like, this is the stupidest thing you could ever do. Uh, I was making fun of Solana. It's like, why would you distract yourself with a physical phone, right? And still, no one's buying this phone because they're saying it's an awesome phone. They're only buying it because they're airdrops, right? So... Anyways, they're going to come out with some successor, successor to Saga, and it's supposed to be cheaper, but no one cares. All people care about are the airdrops. That's it. The airdrops are worth something, so that's what they care about. And speaking of airdrops, the DEX aggregator, Jupiter, a lot of people have been asking about Jupiter. They are going to be airdropping. End of the month, January 31st, you're going to get an airdrop. So whether you make thousands or tens of thousands or a few hundred, I don't know. When um, when Jitto airdropped, a lot of people made a lot of money. So if you've been using Jupiter, then you'll probably go be making some money when you get your airdrops. Uh, but be careful, though. Here's the thing about airdrops. OK, um, too many people fall for airdrop scams. Normally. When you're going to air, get an airdrop, you just get it automatically. They already know your address because they know, for this example, for Jupiter, that you've been using it. They could see all the, the addresses and they'll just airdrop to the address that, that's been using the platform, right? But there are a lot of scam airdrop sites that say, oh, you can only claim an airdrop if you go here. Go to this site, right? But in most cases, those are phishing scam sites that will drain your wallet. I just had someone close to me have that happen to him. Unfortunately, he thought he was reading a, a, a Twitter or X post that was legit. It was a scammer post that looks exactly like the original post, told people to go to his site. And then as soon as you went there, it asked to connect to your wallet. He connected and then it drained out his wallet. So he lost a lot of money. It's a sad situation. So that's the only bad thing about airdrops is because people think that you have to go to a site and connect your wallet, this and that. Normally speaking, when a legit project like Jupiter or anyone else does it, it's just going to be airdropped automatically. You don't need to connect anything because they already know your address. So be careful when you go to a site that claims they're going to give you an airdrop. Most likely it's going to be a scam. So don't do it. Just be careful with that. Be very careful with that. Um, all right. So outside of Jupiter airdrops, just a couple other news. In case you're an Aave fan, they're looking to expand to Solana, utilizing Neon EVM. Neon is a smaller new chain that's kind of like a, almost like a layer two for Solana, kind of. Uh, and basically they're EVM compatible and they're enticing dApp makers to come on Neon EVM so that they could stay EVM and get the benefits of Solana. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. And they're trying to, you know, bring a lot of DeFi projects to the board. So maybe Aave comes to Solana. 
because of Neon, which will be interesting, and it'll be good for Ave. A lot of people use Ave, and it'll be good for Solana as well. Solana's TVL has been going up a lot, so this will probably help it go up even more. All right, guys, that is it. Let's do some Q&A. All right, let's see here. I made a lot. I made up a lot of words during this uh, this stream, like formalness. <laughs> but it sounds good. Uh, Greg is asking a lot about my lifestyle. Um, I only cash out when I need to. I am paying taxes. I'm paying taxes on on everything that I collect. And am I borrowing against my Bitcoin? No, I would never do that because then you're just like truly leveraging your entire portfolio. Never do that. Um, I may leverage and be a degen on smaller plays here or there, but if you're borrowing against your Bitcoin, any crypto, you're putting it at serious risk. Okay. Unfortunately, even Michael Saylor told people to do that uh, during the last bull run. It was a bad, bad, bad move. A lot of people thought that Bitcoin couldn't possibly fall 50% and it did. And it, it forced a lot of liquidations. You'd never want to borrow against your Bitcoin or any crypto. That's just too much risk. And uh, yeah, that's it. Digital Tiger went on a shopping spree at end of 2022. Now self-employed. My gro portfolio grows faster than when I was in hard labor. Thanks for providing wisdom. That's awesome. I mean, you can't beat the gains of crypto, but you need to have money to be able to invest, right? So your hard labor or people that have white collar jobs. The best thing is to utilize their jobs, even though everyone hates it. Everyone hates their job. Everyone hates their nine to five, right? So, but you're, you're, you're doing it for a reason, right? To support your, your family, yourself, your bills, everything, right? But, you know, if you figure out a way how to take a little bit of that and put into your savings and then utilize that to invest, that investment portion can grow and compound over time and eventually overtake your normal nine to five, right? That's what's called financial freedom. If you could do that, then you could work for yourself and then eventually build up more from there. And, and it sounds like exactly what you did. So congratulations. That's what most people want to do, right? That's why sometimes being frugal is a good thing. You know, maybe not buy five cups of coffee um, or, you know, from Starbucks a day or maybe not go somewhere or not buy a new car or not do this or not do that, you know, save that money so that you can invest. But the problem is most people, especially Americans, don't want to do that. Americans are spenders. Americans like to spend uh, for con as an economy. That's great. Uh, so we never really have to worry about deflation as a country. But for individuals, um, you know, that that's what keeps people locked in to a nine to five for so long. Massive V-shaped bounce from that panic dump. I didn't even notice it because I was talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you don't see like stuff like this. If you're watching on a minute scale, yeah. You know, you're watching on a daily scale, it doesn't even register, right? You know, sometimes it's best to just zoom out or just not pay attention and focus on the fundamentals like what I did in this stream with the hash rate. It's the most boring thing you could talk about. Like seriously, it's like no one, probably no one else will even talk about it or make it as a main topic. 
but it is actually the most important metric there is when it comes to Bitcoin, right? If you see the hash rate start going down in a major way consistently over years, that's when you know Bitcoin is not doing so well, right? But I don't think that's ever going to happen. The hash rates will continue on going higher. But if you see like a, from 2020 to now and you see the hash rate just doing this, going downwards, that's when you know you probably should get out. <laughs> but it's not going to do that. Sorry, I was on the wrong camera angle. Uh, I'm worried for some folks who aren't thinking about taxes. Just a reminder, all those trades you make are taxable. That is true. Every year, well, you're not their accountant, so that's not your business. But it is true. A lot of people in crypto, they don't, they don't worry about taxes. They don't care about taxes or they ignore it. You know, just think, uh, this is how I think about it, right? Um, people that are invested in crypto, you're going to be richer in the future than you are now. Okay, if you do it right, dollar, DCA, hold all, accumulate, right, hold all. Um, you're going to be richer later than you are now. So you rather pay the taxes now than have the IRS come after you later when you're much richer. And those fines will be much more harsh, right? So that's how I look at it. Would you rather pay taxes now on your smaller gains or taxes on your huge, gigantic gains later on? Right? When all coin season? 2025. Really simple. 2025. What are your thoughts on Bill? I'm not laughing about that question. I'm la laughing about something else, but I'm not going to comment on it. Uh, I don't know what Velo is, and I don't know why this just, just turned off. Um, I have no idea what Velo is. Supercharged money velocity. Uh, oh, I get it now. It's short for velocity. Connecting businesses and individuals to the global pool of funds to supercharge the velocity of money. Connecting businesses and individuals to the global pool of funds. What the hell does that mean? They're trying to create a, a liquidity pool for, for businesses? Contracts with Stellar and BNB. BNB is not so bad, but Stellar. Okay, th these two chains are holding it back in a big way. If this was for ETH, Solana, anyone else besides Stellar and BNB, they would be doing much better. They launched in 2020. And basically... I mean, there is no recovery at all, which means this project is probably dead in the water. Stan. Shady Luke, are you from the IRS? Can you please mute the mic when you drink? No, I'm sorry. That's too much work. Um, can Chainlink hit $150? Sure. Sure. 10x, yes. Favorite AI coin? Um, I don't really have one. I don't really have one because I think the AI space in crypto is too immature right now. So there's not a one that's a clear leader. So. Am I wearing snow boots and tours to come? Uh, no, I'm not, Nick. 
thankfully my my heating system is pretty good <laughs> will coinbase recover yeah let's check it let's check it coin uh coinbase is up today coinbase is up but it did fall down a lot it was like 170s before uh i shares bitcoin trust is a new 52 week low today uh, even though it's the third day of trading. But it started really hot at 26. Now it's at 24. This will come up. BlackRock, once they launch their ads everywhere and they put their weight behind this. Yeah, it's going to come up. But right now, stocks aren't doing very well. Today, we're starting in the red Deep, deep, deep red. Uh, Scrappy Loco, when should you decide to sell on a dead, bad project? When you just had enough. Like when you decide to leave your, your uh, girlfriend or your spouse. You're just like, I had enough. And you just do it. You got a wicked jump shot, by the way. You know what? Like, I shoot a little bit more behind my head. And I realized that uh, Jokic does the same thing. When he shoots, like, really behind his head. So it makes it even more harder to block. I don't know why. I just... That's just my form. The newer, the newer generation is definitely not like that. It's more like on the way up. So you could shoot, like, 30 feet. You can't shoot 30 feet. Um, thoughts on Blur? I can't believe that Blur has overtaken the, the NFT market from OpenSea. I guess that's the power, you know, power of having a coin. Um, I think Blur is going to be a powerhouse. Although there's other NFT marketplaces that are coming out, but Blur, they seem to be doing really well. I think they took 80% of sales. I mean, 80% of all NFT sales on Ethereum is now in Blur, and it's only like 20% on OpenSea. That's like incredible. That's incredible. I don't know how they accomplished that in such little time. Did I make a decision on my Cybertruck? Why well, I placed my $1,000 deposit down. But I don't know if it's the right decision because there's more and more things coming out about Cybertruck every day that makes it look even worse. So I don't I don't know. Solomon, I have no clue. And I don't think it's a catalyst for a massive dump. No. Stop trying it, guys, guys, stop trying to find reasons to explain a next dump that that's that's the thing I, I i don't quite get it solomon all right um uh, stop finding ways to scare yourself out of the market that's honestly that's the one thing i've been doing over the long the long years on youtube is getting people not to be flooded out in the market getting people to see the bigger picture if you truly understand my conviction in Bitcoin now is 10 times higher than it was before. And it's just because I truly understand. I truly believe and understand what I'm saying now about Bitcoin. Like I didn't, I didn't believe all that before. But over time, as I learned more and more about Bitcoin itself, about money specifically, my conviction in Bitcoin has gone up through the roof. And I think it'll be the same way if you do the same. Are now well at my age I'm not trying to go pro, so I don't think I need to change my jumper. You know, I actually saw this article from CNBC. Uh this one right here. Um I'm too cheap to sign up for CMC Pro. Where to invest fifty thousand dollars with treasury yields rising again? The second part of that title is meaningless, okay? With treasury yields rising again. No one cares about that. No one's going to put money in treasury yields. 
uh, it doesn't even outperform inflation over over long haul. So where to invest fifty thousand? Like in my opinion, like anyone that's investing has to has to go with crypto. Like I I don't okay unless you're in retirement and you want to just preserve your wealth, you don't care about growth or very little about growth, and you just want to preserve your wealth, I get how you wouldn't want to invest in crypto. But for everyone else, for everyone else that wants to make gains, substantial gains with their investment, there is no better place than Bitcoin and crypto. There is just, you can't, you can't disprove that. You can't find anything that outperforms Bitcoin and crypto. You just can't. So why would you invest in anything else? I just don't get it. Like, it may sound irresponsible to go all in on crypto, but that's, if you know, if you're investing, you're looking for gains, you're looking for life changing wealth, or just attain financial freedom. It's with crypto. It's not with gold. It's not with treasury yields. You're not going to attain life changing wealth by buying treasury yields. With equities, maybe. But what's faster than stocks? Bitcoin and crypto by a long shot, right? Like, I just don't, you know. I get it because not everyone knows about it as much as I do or you guys. So I get why everyone's not in it. But, you know, that's just a golden opportunity for everyone in the know to take advantage, especially we know having events coming up. Most people on this plan do not know anything about Bitcoin or having events. So there you go. Social. Uh, socially Zaken. Um, injective or Celestia? Um, why not both? I like both. I like Injective a little more than Celestia because I think they have more traction overall. They have more users, more volume, and so forth. Celestia is still very early, small. So I like Injective more than Celestia, but if you're investing, just split it up 50-50. Both are fantastic. I don't want gold. I would rather have food if I had to choose. Did you, did you guys see about uh, or hear about uh, Zuck's like Armageddon bunker? It's like 20 floors of housing, uh, sustainable, like, uh, you know, like a garden and a lake and, uh, and whatever. It's wild. It's wild. Yeah. But um, in an Armageddon situation, Bitcoin, gold, whatever, they mean nothing. You want food, water, and ammunition. <laughs> That's really it in an Armageddon situation. Uh, does your basketball court double as a bunker? It could if I actually stored stuff in there, but no, I don't. Um... I could make it into a bunker if I wanted to. <laughs> it's deep enough in the ground. Uh, Homestead said, Jose, I made it to 800K my first year in crypto by putting 55K. That was in 2017. Yeah, I had a similar story. In 2017, when I started, I was dead broke. Um, I had like $3,000 left. I was living off of what I made in... Um, uh, what I made before, it was a long story, but early 2017, I was dead broke and I only had like $3,000. And by the end of 2017, I was close to, I was close to a million. I went from $3,000 to, I think I was like at, I peaked out at around 700,000 or 800,000 by January when the alts really flew. And I'm like, man, I'm going to be a millionaire. And then things dumped down. Um, so I was pretty close. That was from 3000 to almost a million in one cycle. In, in one year. 
basically. Um, and 2021 really pushed me over the top, like because I held most of it going all the way down in 2018, 19, 20, and 2021, and finally got rewarded in 2021. Did you see the Dumb Money movie, the GME movie? I did not. I don't even know where you go to watch that. Uh, true USD, yeah. It's still deep pegged. So hopefully this doesn't turn out to be a disaster. But I just want to warn you guys. Just, just don't do. Just don't get into any project that this man is involved with. Uh, just look up his history. Just way too many shady things has happened. <laughs> JH, you were not my exit liquidity because, in fact, I held almost everything. I held it all the way down. I preached, I did what I preached, and some could say that was a stupid idea, but I held almost everything that I had at the peak of 2021 until now. Um, I only sold off small chunks when I needed to, and but still, vast majority of it I just held. Um, you should release a documentary. I think by the time after I retire, I think that can make a good story. Because I've been an entrepreneur, I've been a reseller, uh, flipping things, arbitraging uh, ever since I was in high school. And it paid for a lot of things. It paid for like my college tuition. It, it paid for the cars and everything that I wanted to do early on. Um, but, you know, it led to some it led to some nasty um, um losses in the in the markets the 2000 market the 2008 market um 2018 <laughs> it led to a lot of those and, and it, it got me to where i am now um solomon i saw that um, but it's good. I mean, I think the thing is, yeah, I think when it comes to crypto, everyone loves to find a reason to, to be fearful, which is okay. In some cases, when everyone seems like they're ultra bullish, then there's a good argument that maybe you try to find ways to explain why it could be bearish, why things could go down. Right. Um, I get that. And I'm not saying that is wrong, but like right now, when we have like a small little dip that reset Bitcoin back two weeks, this is not one of those situations. If anyone knows anyone from Netflix, I will do a documentary. <laughs> Um, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but George, if you had to do it again with 3k, would you do it again? That's very interesting. Yeah, I would. Well, obviously knowing the outcome, I would, but you know how I even ended up with that 3k because I was so broke is I lost everything in 2000. Um, um, I lost everything in in 2008, I really didn't invest. And then, you know, I had family and stuff. Like, I really had no no money. So the only reason why I had a 3K is because prior, the year before, like in 20, was it 2016 or 2015? I decided to flip cars because I love cars. So I would have, like, I would, like, find a million cars. Back then, Facebook Marketplace wasn't a thing. So in Craigslist, I would just like put out a hundred feelers every single day and buy dirt cheap cars at below KBB value, right? So I would find, let's say someone is sold, selling um, 
150,000 mile Toyota Highlander for $3,000. And, you know, I found some that are in four runners and so forth. And I would buy them for like one to three K cash. And I'll flip them for five to six K. And I was very successful at that. So I made like maybe like 20 grand, but then I used most of it to just survive because I didn't have money. So eventually I had $3,000 left. And then I saw in 2017, Bitcoin was coming back up again. I realized my mistakes from not holding back in 2013 and 2014 when it collapsed. Um, and I'm like, man, I got to get back in. I got $3,000 left. What am I going to do? And I bought Bitcoin at that time. So that's what I did with the $3,000. And, and I got a little bit into Ethereum too, because Ethereum was just like $8, $4 at the beginning of 2020, 2017. And it was crazy. One snack video, I never, <laughs> never. Uh, Paul says, is it still worth contributing a 401k thought? I mean, a, again, it, you know, it doesn't hurt if your company is matching, you know, they match 3% or whatever. If you want to max that out just in case as a contingency plan, I don't see anything wrong with that. But if you're like, a lot of people are putting like 12%, 15%, 20% into their 401k. I, I just, for me, I would, I wouldn't do that. Um, I don't have a 401k. Um, I just feel like you can do much better with that money if you invest it yourself, right? But then again, if you have a very, uh, if you have a company that allows you to do whatever you want in your 401k and you could buy like, you know, Bitcoin, you could buy Bitcoin ETFs with it, maybe that's the next best thing. Well, after that scam drop that happened during my stream, look at, well, now we're a little bit higher than when I started. See, these kind of situations, I, you know, these kind of like are whale driven. There's no doubt. Something like this is whale driven for sure. Um, just to try to scare people out. There was absolutely zero reasons for this to happen um, other than people trying to scare people out. That was it. Uh, hello from Mexico. Why don't you like Stellar? Because there's, there's no future. It just exists, but it, it's not doing anything. Over the last few years, I've heard Stellar say that they were going to go into uh, stable coins. Never amounted to anything. I heard they had a partnership with IBM and was going to get into, you know, supply chain. Never went anywhere. Uh, I heard that they were going to become, you know, like a like a a true L one with smart contracts. I don't think that went anywhere. I mean, they they just don't have any. There's no direction. There's no clear direction. It just exists, but it's not doing anything, right? Um, kind of like Ethereum Classic. It has no direction. It's just it's just there. It's just hanging, right? It's playing, it's basically like if you're a sports guy, it's playing not to lose. It's not playing to win. It's like, they're just, they're just there. They're playing not to lose. And projects like, like that just don't do well. Well, I take that back. In a bull market, everything does well. But it's not going to do as well as those that are playing to win. Let's just put it that way. So, so James Harden on project. James Harden plays to win. He just chokes during pressure. Um, hey, Bitcoin is at 43. Nice. Come on, Miles. Stop asking about horse meat. <laughs> 
I'll give you the name for sure. A lot of these other people ask me about all these other memes. They have horrible name, copycat names. I'll say horse meat does sound very funny and original. Someone said they made a Gary Gensler coin and uh, they were going to send me 50% of it. I don't know what happened there. Someone yesterday said that. Not that I'm really expecting it, but uh, it would be funny if that takes off. But horse meat does sound funny. Yeah, OpenSea. OpenSea should have dropped the token, but I think they didn't because all their VCs told them not to. They have large VCs um, backing them, and those VCs probably don't want their shares to be diluted or something. Um, I think it was a big mistake for OpenSea not to airdrop tokens to the community, and now Blur is just like dominating. Lobster roll. The 3K, I went all Bitcoin in 2017. Later in the year, I started diversifying when it started growing up and going upwards. But yeah, I started just just in Bitcoin. But you know, Bitcoin early 2017 was only $1,000, right? So a little bit different time back then. But still, I don't think, I don't think, you know, you had to do it any different now. Uh, Mark Meyer thoughts on Trias and Kuji. Trias not, I mean, Neutron, Kujera. I'm Neutron, but I think they have a chance because they're they're within they're within Cosmos, so everything in Cosmos is blowing up. So they have a chance of blowing up. They're already 500 million. They're not small. Uh, last month they are down from a month ago, 15 percent. For the year, they're up 500%. So, Gujera, I, I, I'm more bullish on. Trias, not so much. Why is Jupiter better than Radium? Well, I mean, Jupiter is an aggregator. So, it's supposed to get liquidity from multiple sources, where Radium is just one. Um, bullish on Beam over Gala, yes. At this point in time, I'd much rather hold Beam. Beam is like an L1. I always pick L1s generally, like that's my thing, because they're the foundational layer for DAPs. I would pick Beam over Gala. All right, guys. To conclude, to conclude, um, the most important metric for Bitcoin, most important metric, probably the most boring metric, but the most important metric is the hash rate. And it's still skyrocketing, okay? Which means the network is getting more secure, more and more, more and more miners are powering the network, and the price of Bitcoin always, always follows this metric. So if the hash rate is skyrocketing, it's just a matter of time, Bitcoin's price does too. That's it. <laughs> That's it. All right. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right. Have a good one, guys. Take care.